Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, there's another Batman related video. So I actually uh, have seen The Batman, the latest film that came out in theaters March 4th, uh, for a total of three times. I saw it with my mom, then I saw it with my buddy, then I saw it with my mom and my dad. So it was really cool to see it three times. Uh, the first time I saw it, you know, I reviewed it. Reviews already up there. Um, I freaking loved it. I was like, this is the the definitive version of Batman. However, I had a few questions and some, you know, what what what's with Alfred? You know, what, why don't we see him? You know, what's with the Ave Maria thing? You know, all this, of course, spoilers for the Batman. Duh. Uh, and then I saw it a second time and I kind of understood a little bit more. And I'm not an idiot, but you know, it's a three hour movie. There's a lot to unpack. And then the third time I saw it, which was just a few days ago, um, I was okay. I fully understand it, and I can say with certainty, I love a butt ton of DC films and I love a butt ton of Batman films. But The Batman is, in my opinion, the definitive Batman film. Before that, it was either The Dark Knight or the Lego Batman movie. And this is The Batman is now, is uh, you know, it's now, it's number one. Um, so I kind of just wanted to briefly talk about why we're getting so many Batman reboots. And why there's like, you know, there's the Joker, you know, the movie Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. And then there's Joker Suicide Squad DCEU. And then there's... You know, Joker, again, spoilers for the Batman in The Batman. You know what I mean? With Barry Cogan or Quaggan, whatever his name is, um, who's in Eternals, Druid. And, you know, there's a lot of different versions of certain characters. And I was talking with one of my buddies, and they were like, you know, Fran they didn't say franchise, but they franchise fanatic. They didn't say that, but you got the dress. Um, they were like, how come there's so many different versions of Batman? You know, what's with that? Um, and I was like, okay, well, let's, you know, I, oh, I didn't tell them like this, but essentially I was like, well, the reason why there's so many Batmans, Batman, Batmans, is because you can do, like, Batman is the most uh, versatile character in DC. And I know, you know, oh, there's Iron Man, and there's Deadpool, and there's Spider-Man. You know, there's been a lot of Spider-Mans over the years. Uh, but Batman, I think, DC or Marvel, he's probably the most definitive. Like, when you think of, when you think of DC, most people think of Batman first. You know, they'll think of Superman, Wonder Woman, whatever, Joker, Marvel, Iron Man, you know, whatever. But if I just walked up to some random dude on the street and said, hey, out of, you know, just favorite superhero go, nine times out of ten, they're probably going to say Batman. And there's a reason for that. It's not just, you know, back in the 40s, Batman looked really effing weird. He had a gun. It was kind of strange. I have that. I don't have the first version, but I have a, you know, copy of the first version. Uh, if I had a the actual version, I, I probably wouldn't be here. I'd be in a freaking mansion like Bruce Wayne. But, beside the point, uh, there's a lot, you know, ever since that very beginning issue of Batman where he had the pistol, he was kind of different. And then we got different iterations of Batman in the comics. You know, he started getting more, I don't want to say kiddie, but he became a little bit more kid-friendly. Um, and then toward the, you know, 80s, 90s, as he became more kind of the, the dark knight that we know of today. Kind of dark, brooding, extreme, you know, he won't kill... But he's extremely violent. And now, you know, we bring that to present day in the comics where he's essentially the Batman we all know and love. Transgressing that to the films, you know, we got the, the 40s, I think, version. I don't remember the guy's name. He, Adam West is not the first Batman. I know that's a shocker. Whenever you think of the first Batman on film, it's Adam West. But it's not. It's another dude. I don't remember his name. I'm sorry. He's dead. I'm sorry. But uh, Adam West, sadly, also has passed away. But he was... For a lot of people, uh, the first version, uh, you know, of Batman that people saw on the, on the small screen. Um, and look, I have the first season of the 66 Batman show. I have and uh, seen the 66 movie. They're not very good. Given the, you know, given 2021, 2022, they're kind of crap. However, given, the, if, if you, if, if one of you guys are, watched Batman in the 60s, um, and you're watching, you know, tell me in the comments, uh, you know, what did you think? Because, honestly, I don't freaking know. Because some people are like, oh, 66 Batman was supposed to be for kids, and that's why it was campy and dumb and silly. And then some people were like, no. It, they were trying to be, you know, brooding and, and, and crazy and, and really, like, gripping, and it just didn't work out. Or, you know, because of the budget, and it was in the friggin' 60s. So I honestly don't, I don't know. You know, I really have no clue. Like, were they trying to make the 66 Batman show campy on purpose or was it trying to be something cool and it just ultimately failed i don't know either way it's kind of funny to watch you know it's 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 fun to get a few chuckles in but honestly in my opinion it's not very well made of course it's in the 60s but you know it's timeless adam west you know oh boy wonder we gotta go you know it's just it's just it's freaking dumb and silly but you know that is for a lot of people the first batman and you know i have some of that material i don't hate it um it's just my least favorite and then you move on to of course you know like michael keaton in 89 and all that and 
you know, the movies themselves are pretty good. I think that Batman is Michael Keaton is not very good in my opinion, but again, I can understand why people love it so much. You know, I mean, compared to the 66 version, Michael Keaton was very, he was the Dark Knight. He was the Robert, Robert Pattinson version of Batman in 89, you know, in the 1980s and, and early 90s. So, you know, yeah, he couldn't freaking move his head. So if, if he heard a noise, he wouldn't be like, Phew. he'd be like, Phew. you know, it's kind of weird. But, uh, limitations of the suit, I guess. And now, I know he's going to be in the Flash film coming out, I think, next year. Um, so, you know, don't, don't, oh, he's back! You know, I know he's back. Um, I'm excited for that. And I don't mind him as a Batman. He is probably my second least favorite Batman. Uh, again, just given the suit. And he doesn't really do a whole lot of fighting. He does, like, maybe two action scenes in the whole film. And he kind of just, you know, he's kind of like, I'm Batman. You know what I mean? Whatever. But, uh, you know, I do understand. I'm not discrediting it, and I don't hate it. It's just, you know, that was a very much different version compared to the 60s and you know personally it's not my favorite but again i understand why people like it uh then you move on to you know like val kilmer in batman forever george clooney batman and robin those are probably the worst i think val kilmer i don't remember a single i've had the movie on blu-ray i got it for like a dollar at the exchange i don't remember a single effing thing about it batman and robin is probably one of the worst films i've ever seen in my entire life if they were trying to make it a 66 campy version, I guess they succeeded, but they didn't really tell you that in the marketing. Um, it was just, oh, we're here to sell toys to the children. And Batman and Robin is PG-13. It is not a children's film. Um, it is not really appropriate for kids, but it is the most kid-friendly PG-13 out of all. But, you know, Batman's ice skating. There's some really weird-ass scenes where, like, Poison Ivy, there's, like, really weird sexual things in that film, which is kind of strange. Um, Batman Forever is more kid-friendly. It's just kind of whatever, you know, Jim Carrey, Riddler, laughing and dancing around, Tom, Tommy Lee Jones, Two-Face, whatever. Um, those were kind of the dark period of Batman, and that's when we got Batman Begins in 2005 and the Dark Knight trilogy, right? Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises with Christian Bale. This is my third favorite Batman. I think, honestly, him saying, I'm Batman. You know, it's, it's, on, it's easy to do that voice. Um, but they're good films. They're very well made. Christopher Nolan did a great effing job. That trilogy is fantastic. It's one of the, it's top tier superhero filmmaking. Um, and, you know, that was very much even more brooding, more dark than, you know, even uh, Michael Keaton. And then you go to, uh, you know, after that we got, you know, um, in the DCEU, we got Ben Affleck, my second favorite, or man, my first favorite, he's my first favorite. Um, you know, Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition is one of my favorite DC films of all time. Um, Justice League, of, I, I call it Justice League 2017. Um, I think Justice League is an okay film. I wouldn't watch it a whole lot, but, you know, it's alright for two hours. Snyder Cut is obviously, I want to say, objectively better. I think we can all agree on that. Um, that's like saying water kills you. You know, I'm sure there's one guy out there allergic to water, but... Water is good for you, objectively. You know what I mean? It's, it's here for a reason. And uh, same thing with Snyder Cut. I think it is the better version of the Justice League film. Uh, ben Affleck is really good in that. And then you get him, you know, he's in Suicide Squad, whatever. Um, apparently he's going to be in the Flash film as well, which I don't even know why they're calling it the Flash, because it's essentially Batman 2.0, but whatever. Uh, and now we're at Robert uh, Pattinson in The Batman, who is my second favorite. This was definitely... If you thought Ben Affleck was, like, you know, really edgy, um, and Christian Bale was really edgy and dark... If, again, if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're watching this, but this is th this version is the most scary. The way they film it, you know, I mean, the very beginning opening shots of that that gang, um, that black dude is trying to you know beat up that Asian guy in the in the, in the um, you know subway, it, and then you you know you hear Batman's footsteps. I mean, it's very it's not scary to us because we're not you know it's a movie, but you know it's scary to the criminals. You know, what I mean, that they, they really. Uh, Matt Reeves really wanted to make that point of the criminals are actively like they're effing terror. They pee their panties when they see or hear the or, you know see the bat signal or whatever. Um, and this version of Batman, yeah, he's not as buff as Christian or you know Ben, but he is a guy that will literally pound you into the freaking dirt. You know what I mean? And he'll he'll f you up pretty good as we see in the film. Um, and that brings us to you know also some animated stuff. You know, uh, we get freaking Troy Baker in the Batman Arkham uh, Origins game. We get. Uh, Kevin Conroy in Arkham Asylum, City and Night, you know, I am Batman, you know, that kind of voice. Um, and then you get the Lego Batman movie, which is one of my favorite films of all time, easily one of my favorite animated films of all time, too. Um, and it is top tier D. I know, oh, it's Lego! No, it's, it's like a serious character study on Batman, and it's also funny as hell. I mean, it's a great, great, great film for all ages. Um, not a kid's film, animated film. Again, there's a difference between the two, but it is a very well-made film. And Will Arnett, you know, is Batman, you know, I'm Batman. You know, it's kind of what I do for my Fat Batman series on YouTube. Um, 
a little more exaggerated, you know, uh, Will Arnett is a little bit different sounding than me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to not copy him, but uh, the Lego Batman movie is, it pokes fun at DC and Batman without making fun of DC and Batman, and it's also, you know, it actually gives you a reason why Batman is the way he is, you know, why he's kind of a recluse, why he doesn't really put people in danger, why he wants to work alone, is because he's afraid of losing people that he loves, and they actually, that's a scene in The Batman, the newest film. And, you know, I kind of always pair The Batman with the Lego Batman movie because, essentially, they're the same thing, except one's a very brutal film and one's a comedy for all age groups. So, it, they're, you know, they're different genres, but they, they both tackle the same subject in really different ways. So, that's essentially the long explanation. Batman is versatile. You can have him carrying a bomb, running around like a freaking moron on the pier, or you can have him pounding someone's face until they can't move ever again and they're a vegetable. You know what I mean? You, you can do... So many different things. you got comic books, video games. I didn't even touch the Lego Batman games. Lego Batman 1, 2, 3, Lego DC Super Villains, Lego Dimensions. All of those are slightly less funny versions of the Lego Batman movie. Uh, and they're also not as intense. It's kind of like a middle ground between the Batman and the Lego Batman movie. I'm talking the Lego Batman games. Um, they're very much the same, you know, kind of caliber in terms of it's like straight down the middle. You know, it's you're not... Not super edgy, not super funny. It's kind of a mix of everything. And I think that, you know, Batman, like I said, he can be extremely goofy and funny and campy. He can be pretty serious and still funny. Or he can be extremely brutal and violent. And, you know, we, we have, like, the Ben Affleck version. You know, Batman shoots and kills people, and then he learns a lesson, and he doesn't do that. Much like Iron Man selling freaking weapons. And then in the end, he learns not to do that. Or Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi learning an actual character arc. You know what I mean? Making these characters better. And that's why Ben's my favorite Batman, but Robert Pattinson also learns a lesson, as you know. In the beginning, he says, I am vengeance, and at the end, when he's pounding that Riddler goon, the Riddler goon, or, yeah, the Riddler goon says, I am vengeance, and Batman's like, Whoa? you know, like, what the fudge? So Batman starts to realize that, you know, being vengeance and just beating up people because you're angry, it's not going to solve your problems. You know, if you want to make real change, you have to focus on justice instead of vengeance. Some of that shit rings real uh, good to this day, if you know what I'm talking about. <coughs> politics, but... Po politics, politics. Anyway, um, I don't want to get into that because I don't want to start World War III in the comments, but it is true to today's world. Um, that scene of Batman helping people, you know what I mean? Like, that was the first... Because, you know, when you think of Superman, you think of, oh, he's a beacon of hope. And then you think of Batman, he's just, you know, beating the crap out of people. But that scene, the end scene of the Batman... It's one of the best scenes in comic book film history because it shows Batman not, for once, being an quote-unquote evil bad guy because that's really what he is. You know, he's a good person, but he does things in a really brutal and violent way. And so does every, you know, Superman kills people, I get it, but, you know, a lot of people are scared. Like, good people, like that Asian dude in the subway, he says, don't hurt me in the beginning. So even the good people are scared of Batman. And then you fo you know focus you know strip, go to the end of the film and Batman's helping the Navy and he's helping you know not the well the Navy I guess the Marines and he's helping that little boy on the on the stretcher or whatever. There is a you know that's the first time we're seeing Batman as like more of a, a hero figure instead of just a dark brooding vigilante. And I think that like I said Batman can do everything. He is the most versatile comic character ever. You know what I mean we've gotten stuff from the 60s. All this stuff that I just mentioned in this video, it's insane. You know, you can take one character that was made in the friggin' 40s in a comic book, and you can create such a crazy, you know, epic character arc in so many different iterations. And, you know, Batman is, we're going to keep getting more Batman reboots until the world explodes, I'm assuming. Or God takes over, or, you know, fucking, you know, z zombies, or China 2.0, whatever happens. You know, I don't know. But, when, and, you know, until the end of the world happens, uh, we're going to be getting more Batman. And that is the point, is that, you know, as long as they can make Batman fresh and relevant, and they can keep making things dark or funny or campy or whatever, via yeah, that's Lego games, Lego movies, comics, animated movies, video games, uh, live action films, whatever you want to do with Batman, there's always something different to do with this character, and that's what's so incredible about him. And you can do that with a lot of other superheroes, you know, Joker and the Spider-Man, whatever. But I think Batman is the one people gravitate towards just because he's so well-known. And there's a reason why Batman is one of the best DC superheroes of all time, and this is exactly it. You can do so much with him. He's not just, you know... He's not, he, can, he you know, he's not just brooding and dark, or he's not just funny and silly and dumb and campy. He can be everything. He can be multiple things at once. It's pretty insane what Batman can do. So anyway, tell me in the comments down below what your favorite Batman movie is, favorite Batman video game is, Lego, Injustice, Arkham, whatever. I'd love to have a little conversation with you down below. Again, uh, I just wanted to make this little video saying, yeah, the Batman movie, 
Uh, it's one of my favorite DC films of all time after seeing it for the third time. Probably final time. Next time I see it will be on Blu-ray. But, uh, you know, the point being is that the reason why we're getting so many different Batmans is because you can do so much with the character. And it's, it's not just a cash grab at this point. The Batman proves that. This new film proves that. You know what I mean? It's something completely different than we've ever seen before in DC history with these films and with this character. And I think if they keep doing that and they keep evolving in a really good way, I think the Batman is going to be a very prominent character for many, many years to come for comic book fans. Thank you guys. We'll see you in the next video.